my talk originally started, or the idea for my talk originally started when Randy Torres passed away. And then again when my friend Atiba Jeffrey passed away only a few weeks ago. Now they were two very different cases. Randy or Nani, he he was like like he actually did the things that everyone like associates the hood with. You know, like all of that. He Yeah, he sold drugs. Yeah. He wasn't no choir boy, but that's what he knew. And he died trying to get a chain. An $800 chain, that's what he was set up for. Because he just really wanted one, like he thought that, like that was worth it. But Atiba was a different story. Atiba. Atiba was kind of an anomaly. He didn't let the neighborhood influence him. He he was a good kid, you know? Like like he was so sweet and kind and he was going somewhere. He kept his head in his books, like he wasn't affiliated with anything. He didn't sell drugs. He didn't do any of that. But he was killed at a bus stop going to get chips. He did everything that people say you're supposed to do to get out the neighborhood. He, he did that. But he ended up being at the wrong place at the wrong time. And he died for it. And that's just to show like sometimes it's they live completely different lives and they had the same fate neither of them were 18 neither of them had graduated yet atiba died a month before he was supposed to graduate before he turned 18. and it's just it's not fair because of the world they were born into, because of their situations, and and it messed with me a lot. It, like it really had me thinking about how we were. I grew up with them, you know. Like I was from the same area. I went to the same school. But I got out and they didn't. And people who don't understand, like, I'm not saying that, like, selling drugs and being on the street is cool or that's what it's about or anything like that. I'm not saying those are right decisions. But that's just what you're raised to know. You're, it's normalized. Like, Selling, selling drugs and being in a gang and doing all that, that's normalized, that's normal, that's not seen as bad. It's, for a, a lot of the times it's survival. Like, and then it's not so simple like, oh, well if he's doing all that, like if they're selling drugs or they're in a gang, like why don't they just stop and go get a job? Who's gonna hire you? When you're raised in the hood, who's gonna hire you? Yeah, you carry yourself a certain way. And you talk a certain way. No one's gonna hire that. But what else are they gonna do? That's what they know. So then you don't get hired. You don't got a way to get money. So then what are you gonna do? And then raised with violence and hate. 
it is not their fault that they do that like that's just what they know from where they are and they have dreams kids around here are so bright they're just misguided and that's really what I want to express that these lives have value to these kids die people die around here and then if they died getting shot or selling drugs or anything like that they're just treated as if their lives have no value oh yeah they chose to do that choice half of their lives half of their lives were not their choice nobody wants this like and i'm also i'm also a person who's sitting here and saying and expressing how for every broken kid from the neighborhood for all my broken people for everybody in the hood that you can make it out that there is hope that is not over is so hard it is so hard and you gotta fight every day But I'm from the hood too and I I'm graduated. I have an associate's degree by the time I'm 18. You know that doesn't that doesn't happen often for us. And trying to explain this to you know someone from a gated community in a big house that was always taught right from wrong and stuff like that it's hard because I don't know how to express to you that while you have choices your choices are limited and then your choices are influenced by the mindset you have and that this isn't just you know, oh, they they made the decision. They made that decision just like completely 100 themselves. Like they were fully aware. They were taught right from wrong, and you know they had all these resources. Like on top of the fact that you know, like that you get minimal opportunity in a place like this, and it's it's a it's like a manifest, and it's a generational thing. You know, like. Like, like if your mother's on drugs your dad's in jail who's gonna take care of you who's gonna watch you who's the babysitter you go to a school that doesn't want to deal with you doesn't teach you right no one's guiding you the street is guiding you so you become what you're surrounded by your environment is influencing you but for everyone who doesn't know how it is and know what this is like I want to express that these lives have value that it's a matter of education it's a matter of teaching them it's a matter of informing them guiding them these are people with no guidance <laughs> given all the situations to make a person fail so how do you make it then and then you can grind every day of your life and you can end up like my friend you could end up like Atiba, who's going to do so many amazing things with his life.
or people ignore a guy like Nani who was so bright just needed guidance who didn't have the resources who didn't have the knowledge who didn't have the perspective of more that there could be more than the block that there could be more than all of that and I just hope that for anyone watching this understands that they have value too and that you can make it out and that that there's so much more and that these These are just I'm sorry. I just want to express that again that these lives do have value. And that how much your neighborhood can impact your path in life and that it's not always a choice and it's not always that simple that there's nuances, there's shades to all of this, and, yeah, thank you.